Good afternoon, everybody, and it is my pleasure to be with Felicia Cowden, who I've known for a very long time, been very involved in uh, Hawaii politics, um, very thoughtful, very caring, one of the most gentle people uh, throughout all cultures on, on the island. And the segue uh, I'm then to move to is Dennis Suzaki, who started this show two years ago had me on it, never invited me back. Uh, he said that I talked too much. Um, and then he smiled, uh, meaning that he liked listening and he liked asking questions. That's the beauty of being a host here. But as the host, uh, I am going to do many remembrances of Dennis uh, for his generosity, intelligence, helpfulness, um, and guidance, morality. Uh, he was very ethical. and. Um, and I'm not the only one. I think, you know, everyone on the island that knew him uh, would say something like that. I'm going to turn to you, Felicia, on that score, because you are well, museum I know. quality. <laughs> I say, you know, I was heartbroken and surprised and shocked when uh, he seemed to get ill and pass so quickly. Dennis was a man of many talents. He helped build modern Hawaii. You know, just about every significant thing that happened, he was out there surveying for it. His name's on almost all of the last handful of decades. He's done so much good work. I don't, I don't really know how we're we're going to be able to move forward without him so well. Um, I even just like I was when I knew I was coming on this show. I, I have this to give to his family. This is a a. A certificate of condolence, you know, from our county council to his family and to his business. He's done so much, and I was rereading it, and I we we put it in here also that he was a part of Think Tech Hawaii, and I think he did a lot even to make our Kauai issues really come onto the awareness of the entire state. You know, this, this is a great program, and he did a great thing, and. Happy, I do talk radio too, and I've had him on my show, and he's an enormous source of information. It's it's uh it's heartbreaking to think of not having them with us, but you know what? Yeah. Even all this library of programs that he did with Think Tech, that's another part of his legacy to keep moving forward. So that's a really good piece. Wow, I. Um, burdened uh, and exhilarated by that statement because uh, I shared much the same thoughts. And um, uh, the footnote on that is that he had printed up cards as a Tic Tech host, and I was told by his niece that he was so proud of this. Yes. And um, and as as a host for a talk show, uh, you better than most would know um, a good interview. And and not just a good interviewee, but just a good flow of conversation uh, goes to meaningful stuff, has humor, has intelligence, and has a point. So um, tell me this. I'm going to start in. Um, okay. I'm 72 years old, and um, as, as, a, as an observer of politics, not until I left Hawaii as maybe 25, 26, um, in all that time, uh, I finally arrived at the point of view that women make the best politicians and legislatures. <laughs> um, and that's a generality, but uh, behind that is the thought uh, that of, of temperance and, and um, I don't want to say distance, but an appreciation of, of positions and um, Maybe it's the lack, lack of testosterone. I don't know. Um, do you have any feeling about that? Well, you know, I, when I joke, when I'm telling people, I always give out my cell phone number or anything. I say, you can look on the council website. I'm the one in the dress. You know, uh, usually on Kauai, it's one or none females on uh, the county council. So this is my third term in office, and I'm that one. And I'd say we all work really pretty well together, me and six men. I would say that there is a little bit of a difference, and at least where I think I fit a certain type of feminine stereotype is I'm I'm a pretty heavy empath. 
you know, I, I have a lot of compassion for our community. One of my most favorite aspects of the job is really the heart-centered work of meeting with constituents, going out there to their houses, to their places of work. I like to make house calls. And that's the most meaningful way for me. And when I'm out there and I'm working with people and I get to experience what their challenges are, it helps me understand how to make policy better. So I think we all have different things we bring to the table. And I will say that, uh, especially this time around, the the guys are pretty good to me. And so, um, you know, it's, they're, they're pretty good. So I, I, I like them. But yes, it's a little different being, uh, you know, I'm a little different than they are. I'll just say that. But I, I'm honored to, to have the job. Pardon me? That's fair to say that one of the, what one of the great strengths you bring is diversity. And I salute going door to door because there's nothing like that. There's nothing like the personal touch. And that's basically you're in a a personalistic society. We as, on, on Kauai, and I, I use the, the, the small we, this, the royal we belongs to those. When, when I'm able to go out, when people call me when they have a challenge, I go and I listen to what's happening for them. And when I have a talk radio program, it's kind of made me be the complaint department for the island. Like that preceded being a council member. So I think people are used to hearing me as a facilitator. And I also have been a volunteer uh, court mediator. So I go out and I'm able to speak with people and it helps me to have a more holistic or comprehensive approach to solving problems. And so even as we're maybe gonna move into talking about hazard mitigation, fire safety, we had this tragedy that is ongoing in Lahaina. And I think that it's fair to say that it was an absolute expose of finding a cascade of weaknesses in, you know, the government comprehensive way of handling things. It just almost was like a, like I said, a cascade of finding the weak points. And so we had so many uh, mistakes that happened. And, you know, when I look at Hawaii or the state as a whole, it is heartbreaking because it could have happened to any of us. On our island here on Kauai, we have long, thin, narrow roads that feed, you know, big parts of the population. We can have half hour uh, rush hour traffic in Hanalei, you know, a, a very small town, you know, it's because of the way our roads are designed in the, you know, just going right around the island in a thin way. So this could have happened to any of our islands. It's terrible that it happened to Lahaina, it happened to Maui. And so I'm I'm really working hard. I was already working hard on looking at hazard mitigation. When we had our 2018 flood that collapsed the highway, I live on the north side of Hawaii. It was my catalytic reason for running. And it hasn't been so easy to really move that needle very far. But I'm thinking right now, when we have the eyes of the world on us, certainly the eyes of the nation, it is the right time to be able to be bringing in the police and federal funds, um, some outside of our area uh, ideology and ability to help do wildfire fighting. And, you know, I, I look at what's happened is sugar's gone down, plantation style's gone down, and then certainly what predated that, the Hawaiian ahupua'a land management style that utilized everything that managed the land in a very environmentally friendly aloha aina kind of way and modern society is a lot more than just what ethnic group is in the lead driver's seat because really it's a kako thing really we're all in the driver's seat aren't we it's not yep. like one race is ahead of another one ethnicity is ahead of another we're, we're all in there we're all leading, we're all doing things, but we've got modern power lines. We have a dependency on the fiber optic cable. We have complex society where we're in buildings, we're in resorts, people who have a lot of resort workers in that area. We didn't see what was happening. And 
you know, I, I'm looking for what we can do on Kauai to make it right, and then what we can do to add to the knowledge of the whole uh, chain of violence and for every one of us. And um, Ricky, you have a long generational history on Kauai. Is that correct? Uh, my great grandmother came here, yes. And then actually, the first one was brought Kamehameha in a boat over to the Russian port raised the flag that he had designed for Kamehameha and um, later on traded sandalwood up and down the Hoppa Trail. Uh, and from that, uh, I am a lineal descendant from the uh, Kaloa Ahukua'a. Yes, so the early time of the connection of our cultures from West to the Pacific. And so we have, we have a, you have a lot of history and you know, what I, I think is maybe part of the challenge is as sugar has gone away and statehood happened during the time of sugar, we didn't maybe have enough plans for who has the responsibility of the land. And it's very different than when we were in our Ahupua'a land management system time or sugar because we have so many introduced plants and so many more threats, like from the power lines and things. So. There's a lot of reasons, and I I prefer to be looking at how we solve this right now with out shame and blame, but what can we do? And others can decide that, but I'm looking at, at what we can do. And I, I'm the only one on our council that wasn't born here. I came here at 21 years old, and I grew up in the Rocky Mountain areas and high fire areas. And so what was real central to my awareness, some of my uh, cousins were hot shots. Hot shots are the firemen for the Forest Service and the federal government. They have hot shots and smoke jumpers. And, you know, we were used to slurry bombers. And for municipal fire departments to be out there fighting wildfires, they really are outgunned. And so... One of the things I've done is I've gotten in contact with one of the contractors that used to be in the National Incident Command Service for the um, Forest Service and the federal government, who grew up in Guam, so he understands the islands, but he works with a number of the tribal people largely for his firemen, firefighters from the forest. Uh, and right now they're up there in Sm Smith River area, the California, Oregon border, fighting fires, but I was asking him, you know, well, what can we do? How can we help this? And so I have, I'm mean, Friday, I'm going to talk to the mayor. Hopefully he'll like my ideas, but, you know, I'm not trying to work around anybody. I'm just trying to bring this idea to the table. And there's federal monies where it can be, and you have like another layer of first responders. And typically those are very young. People, you know, you want young, strong, <laughs> ridiculously courageous. Usually people, once they are parenting, they, they stop being right on the front line of these fires. But uh, what, they, what he would do, and I'm just kind of putting it out there because I want the whole state to think about this, grab about four or five higher from uh, each of the different islands. And, you know, the best would be people who have a cultural understanding of how to relate to the land, the wind, the water, you know, that knows their islands very well. And he would like to be taking them to the Southwest and train them there and train them with continental United States fires, which are big and serious and overwhelming fires that have a lot. And so his organization would be paying them and then bringing them back and seeing if what we could do is work with the fire departments here and the landowners here and help do the, the pre-fire work. That's where you really fight the fires, when you have the brush cut away from the problematic areas, when you have the water sources identified. I want to see if we can't work at reviving our reservoirs instead of shutting them down, making them more safe, putting standpipes off them, standpipes, maybe some for state land, certainly to use the county, um, at least on Kauai, we have inadequate fire flow. So if we had 
um, the county as a client to help support the reservoir and use that water. You know, for our fire float, we have many long valleys and different areas all over the island, actually, that doesn't have fire flow if there is a fire for the fire department. Okay. I understand that better than most, thanks to having a dam on my on great grandmother's land. land. And, yes. Um, looking at that completely different now uh, because it emphasizes having that resource available in the emergency. And water is fungible. I mean, there's the one-time event of, of a fire, you know, every 10 years or five years or whatever. Probably is a little bit more, but just to have that reassurance. If What I like about what was just said was um, and the way you catalog a resource is you do it through people. So you go to the farmers, you integrate them, you go to landowners, you integrate them with, fire fighting, not just the professionals, but also the community, because I've heard over and over that sometimes Dillingham Ranch was saved from a fire because of the, the manager there, Moana, uh, called up the cowboys to get on the, the bulldozer and, and dig me a fire break. And, and he went up the road and did all that, and that action not only saved Dillingham Ranch. What better place than Kauai, where we're all We've got tons of machines. We're all good at using them. And the only secret sauce would be, you know, to coordinate and, and, and to tighten the coordination, the cooperation, communication lines, and empathy lines. It's, it's the kind of thing when that storm hit uh, in 2018, I was up in Hill and the lightning almost hit me. Oh. Uh, and it was totally black over Hanalei. I mean, I had a ton of empathy but boy i tell you i was i got scared down the hill uh yeah yeah the the lightning was really intense and what you're you're speaking of there is the importance of well all, everybody the whole community but with the large landowners i had the blessing of being invited out to gay and robinson when our two of our fire teams were out there uh their manager Howard Green, I'm just to say it, you know, he had a big smart grid, I mean, smart screen up, and we looked at where they had uh, non potable water stand pipes up, looked at where the gates were, what's blocked, where's um, buildings. I would really like to see us do that with all of our large landowners and then also to be working with our community associations. And so, even with this idea of having a fire, I mean, a, a wildfire fighting crew. They, they would just be working with these people and maybe do trainings, working together. If there's a big fire like we just saw with Maui, you would take all of them from every island and go right there and, and fight it together there with the firemen. And just like our uh, life-saving people, our ocean safety team, our ocean safety officers, they're great in the water. Usually, after a time, they join the fire department, right? Very often when you have these wildfire fighters, I would expect that they would join the fire department. You know, as they age out into stronger adulthood, some of them would become key people in the fire department. So you have this cross-pollination, cross-elements. And so uh, I think there's a lot that we could do that would work. And it can be many other types of disasters that we prepare for, that you can use a team like this to be an environmental disaster team that's just heavier focused on um, the non-municipal type of disasters, particularly, especially fire. So I think that that would work. Uh, that kind of thing speaks to two-way conversation. Again, the, the generational knowledge, you pass it up and down. Um, but also, I'd like to go side to side again, you know, the amateurs, not to the professionals. And I'm going to use that as a segue uh, to taxes because some of the stuff that, that you're talking about um, has tremendous benefit. Now we had this, the benefit incalculable. The problem was Nobody saw raising money for it, or put it better way, calibrating, asking for 
benefit the tax and then giving the benefit. We see that over and over. And so any tax policy, and thank you for serving on the council because boy, do I know how hard it is. Uh, and, and, and so I'm gonna bring in, I'm gonna bring in taxes and when we're looking at this funding, something right now, I think we could probably pull some federal funding in. We have on Kauai a really wonderful new director of our water department, our chief engineer. He's got a lot of experience at getting federal federal monies. We also have a city council person from Honolulu. Um, I'll just say it, Esther uh, Kiaina. She she's done. Um, Kiaina. She has done. Worked with Daniel Anoy, and she was telling the rest of us. You mentioned the Hawaii State Association of Counties. She's part of that, and you know how we can access some of these federal monies at least to get ourselves started and going, particularly with things like the reservoirs and the fire flow protection. But when we're looking even at property taxes, which is more um, our run-of-the-mill municipal uses, but certainly can fire departments and our water department, all of that, uh, we on Kauai, we are having the same challenge that every other island is, and really actually all the states are, and that's that the inflation and the market pressures have raised housing values skyrocketed it. If I were to give a shout out to Grassroot Institute, I, they had an article that I thought was really important when it's saying, you know, we kind of, as counties, we're raking it in on the property taxes because everybody's properties went up so high. We have a tax cap of 3% on our homestead, which we're now calling owner-occupant houses. But a lot of the other ones, houses are selling for 10 million, 15 million, on either side of somebody who bought their house for eight or $900,000 or $500,000 20 years ago. So it's pressuring everything up. So we have been trying to brainstorm ways to contain that, and, you know, we still have to make the money because we have all this inflation also on fire trucks, just because we were talking about that last fire truck we bought was $900,000. The next one will certainly be a million. You know, they've gone up so much. Everything has. So we're looking and already passed a tiered structure. And we're doing our county is going to have tiers on every tax class if we want to. So do you know what that means? Help me. I'm going to throw my numbers in that I want because I live in an expensive side. Like all the lowland lying areas near the beach, those are all just crazy expensive. And then the north and the northeast is expensive. So I'd like to see that first tier be 2.5 million. So 2.5 million, that means a decent house, right? That's not a mansion. That could be a shack yeah. in Hanalei. And so we're doing a tiered structure. Um, I'd like to see the next tier be 5 million. And above 5 million, that's even more. So people, I mean, so the first 2.5 million gets taxed lower, then the next gets a little bit higher, then the highest part gets taxed even more, trying to make it be where people can bear the cost of what they're being taxed. And, but we really need the people to engage. We also have something on the agenda for next week. And that's where there's a tax cap of 20% above assessment. So it means if you have that person buy a place on one side for 10 million and the other one for eight, you can't jump up more than 20% of what your, your last year's tax was. So it would take almost five years for your property assessment to double. And I think that will help people because we are just replacing our population as we're having so many people come. And taxes are uh, boring until you get hit with them and you aren't expecting them and you can lose your house over it. You can have to toss your tenants. We have had a lot of replacement of our population. And so we really need people to engage. I'd really like to see lenders come to our committee meeting next week we meet on Wednesdays because I think it'll you know we I want to make sure our market isn't too volatile but 
it, everything gets affected, you know, it affects the mortgage. If people, if people have a mortgage and then their tax rate jumps enormously, which happened last year, unexpectedly when yeah. people can't make their payments. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, that was dramatic. Uh, your basic method is comparables. And unfortunately, what they call comparables should be apples to apples, but sometimes your neighbor on one side is an orange, and the other side is a prune, and uh, your your apple or your golden apple infects them all and vice versa. Uh, the other thing I'd throw out is to look at people's circumstances. We do this well with our kapuna. We do take it uh, into account people's incomes. I wouldn't mind looking at people's legacies if they're first generation, second generation. And I go there because it's recognizing their, their ancestors paid into it. And I don't mean, I don't want free rides. I, and maybe I'm turning communist. I do want people to give what they can give rightfully. Uh, and it's, I want also, yeah. What's challenging with that, I know we're taxing people really hard. Maybe their family gave the land for the school and for the hospital and for the soccer field and everything else. Um, we have to stay within the, the Constitution of the United States. So we have a very complicated tax form where we're trying to support and protect our working people, our working families, our people with generational knowledge. They probably are the biggest effort is there to help them. Um, but we have to be constitutionally fair. So it's not as easy as you think, but we can meet on that. And um, I appreciate your input and anybody else. And I sure appreciate this opportunity to speak with you on Think Tech Hawaii. I appreciate it too. And I knew that this would be a thought piece and this is what I was shooting for. And the only other thing I would say is, I know talk shows great, but uh, writing essays and, and um, even letters, emails, the thought behind writing is great because you get to control it and maybe string some stuff together. The benefit isn't just to the reader, it's also to the writer, because then you can layer it and, and you can go to a point and, and maybe have a side, sidebar. Um, above all, keep speaking out, keep testing things. There's nothing better than challenging people's thinking. They've got to think. They cannot do the same old thing the same way. Um, and uh, we need everybody, we need everybody to make good calls. Thank well, you. When I heard Dennis checked out, I called him up on the phone and I, I left a message saying he checked out too soon. He was one that really thought of what it meant for everybody, all the way down to the length of driveway. So, on that, Dennis is Aki Note. Um, I join you in, in uh, a fond aloha oi on the 30th and um, uh, and see him in the in, in the next world. Yes. So thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Honored. And, um, Mahalo.